Well, think back to the Qualcomm settlement a couple months ago, back in April. They had only four options of what to do if they wanted to get to 5G. They could settle, swallow their pride, settle with Qualcomm, go with Intel, which was lagging behind in 5G. They've, they're known for making worse 5G modems and, and 4G modems than Qualcomm. They could go to Huawei. We know that wouldn't work out. Um, or they could wait and do it on their own and start from scratch, which would take several years. Meanwhile, their competitors, Samsung, Huawei, are already putting out 5G phones. So if they want to hit that 2020 mark of getting a 5G phone, this is the best thing they had to do is settle with Qualcomm. Thinking longer term, Apple is a big proponent of doing everything they can in-house as mm -hmm. much as possible. They make their own processors in-house, and that's been hugely successful. They make better processors than probably anyone in the mobile space. Okay. And now they're going to do the same thing with modems. Mitch, since you know the chip space so well, how successful do you think Apple will be at this longer term, and what's it mean for the competition? I think right now you have to bet on Apple a little bit because essentially they've already done this before. They designed out their PMIC chip um, from a, a company called Dialog Semiconductor. That's the power management side. But the one, the one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is power management ICs versus 5G is, is definitely not the same game. So you can't really bake it in that they're guaranteed going to successfully create a, a modem, a smartphone modem. But you can say they're definitely going to invest uh, significantly into it. So it's a key risk now uh, to Qualcomm, who's got something like 60% of the 4G market. They're going to have a, a, a significantly or a similar share in the 5G market. So now um, that business model is essentially a risk. But the fact that Qualcomm's flat tells you that there is a little bit of investor skepticism if Apple's actually going to be able to create a high quality modem. How, Steve, will Apple win the war? How long will it take them to do it? And what will winning mean? Well, they have plenty of runway here. Winning will mean divorcing themselves from Qualcomm and not having to pay what they view as unfair royalty fees, fees and licensing fees. But they have plenty <laughs> of runway. So this deal with Qualcomm gives them several years to kind of figure it out. And they have a two-year renewal at the end of that. So they have plenty of time. They, they have a good head start now, a good foundation with all this, uh, these 2,000 Intel employees they're acquiring, this IP, the patents, and so forth. That gives them a good head start to build it out from there. Mitch, final question with the news today that T-Mobile and Sprint will move forward with their merger. Uh, it's a big one for the landscape of 5G. What's it mean for the chip companies? I think it means that chip, uh, chip stocks are going to have to compete even more, chip companies have to compete even more. So you've got basically uh, hardware companies now entering the design, or sorry, the chip, uh, the chip space. So that's going to mean more money going to design companies like Synopsys and Cadence. It means that now more differentiation is actually going to be on the chip side. So I think that's been kind of an incorrect assumption that semiconductors are kind of commodities because essentially now you see everybody competing to try to create the best chip. So I think that's very good, essentially long term for chips in general because it means a margins probably go up. Hmm. And then in terms of the merger, I mean, that, that doesn't really change our outlook in smartphones. So I think that's more of a neutral. But I think all this news is essentially very good for chips because it essentially means that it's becoming less and less commoditized over time.